Hey there! In this tutorial I'll be covering the basics on how to use my audio visualization templates I created in one of my previous videos. Um, you can download the source files to that in the description for that video. I'm also linking them down in this description. So right now I've extracted or I've pulled the zip archive on my desktop. You can see it right here. So we're going to open that up with a program. I'm using 7-Zip here. And today I'm going to guide you through how to use these two templates, Digital Dominance and Rays of Light. So I'll be dragging these onto my desktop. Be sure to read the readme file included with the download archive and also extract the resource folder to wherever you have your After Effects project files. So after that we're going to fire up After Effects. I'm using After Effects CS6 in this case. I think anything uh, up from CS6 or CS5 will do. You have to see for that yourself. Okay, so now in After Effects, we're going to take our project files that we just had. So I'm going to navigate to my project files. So I put them on my desktop. So the first one we're going to look at is Rays of Light, which is the one with the orb in the middle. What we want to do, you can see that it, it runs fine, but it's not really reacting to the music. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on Audio Placeholder and select Replace Footage File. So I'm going to navigate to my music. You're going to drag that in there and you'll immediately see that it has taken effect and the actual composition that I've set up is reacting to the music. The next thing you're going to want to do is, if you see here in the Projects Panel 2, there are a few uh, compositions set up that have an underline at the beginning. These just indicate that you will have to make changes. To if we were to turn off our layers to make sure that the music is working, the audio is on the audio composition. You don't have to change anything in the compositions that do not have an underline because those are for the actual effects at hand. So what you're going to want to do to just make sure that it's running is you're going to turn off all your layers, then just go to the beginning. And if you hit space, you will notice that it does play it, but there is no audio. Going back to frame zero, you're going to click this button on the right side of your screen. So if you run it from there, it will play the music. So that works just fine. That way we make sure that the actual audio is working. We're going to reactivate all our layers so we have the composition back in there. And from there, always make sure that only the audio layer or the composition with audio layer is activated for audio. If you have others on, the audio will overlap and let's just say rest in peace headphone users. From here, we still have to fix a few things. If we zoom into 30 seconds, you'll see that it still says track title, artist name and title and we're going to fix that real quick. So the way to do that is, if you see here, there are two compositions called Timestamp and Music Title. We're going to go into Music Title first. I've opened these all in these tabs that you can see right here by the main composition. So I click on Music Title. You can also open it from the Project Explorer here on the left in the Music Title composition. So we will be changing the track title and the artist name and title to whatever the file we selected is called. This is pretty much all you'll have to do. Now if we navigate back to the main composition, you will see it has immediately taken effect. Now if you see as time progresses, the timestamp moves on, but the actual end time is not specified. So the way you can do that is you go into timestamp composition, and on the right you will see three layers, and each of these are text layers. So the one on the left, for instance, is the timestamp. This one is actually done with expressions, which you can see here is just a short line of code. And what it does is just that as you go through the composition, it will actually adapt to the time that the track is running at. But you see the one on the right should indicate when the song ends. So to do that, if you check in the project panel once again, beside the song, the mp3 file in this case, you can see that it says media duration, which indicates the minutes and the seconds that the song will take, which in this case is 540. So once you've put that in, that's all you have to do here. Now, back to the main composition, you should see, scrolling back to the 30 seconds, that it is now working as intended, but we still have one issue. And the most important part here is that the composition is set up for just a minute. So after a minute, it will be over, but the song goes five minutes altogether. To fix this issue, select the main composition, the one that we're on right now in your projects panel, and you will right click on it and select composition settings. From here, you have this nice little tidy menu. And in this duration part down here, you're going to enter the length that you want it to be. So in my case, we're going to say about 540 and add like two seconds just for a margin so we can maybe fade it in in Premiere. So with that done, you will see that nothing has really changed. So what you have to do is this slider up here is now way bigger. 
So you're going to pull that out all the way. And if you see right here, this song goes on beyond this part, but the layers are not active after that. So navigating to the end, you will see that the song is actually still going, but it's not playing it. To fix that, you're going to select all the layers, and then on these bars right here, you're just going to drag this one all the way to the end. Now, one thing to keep in mind, which is quite important, is the waveform has completely dropped off here. So you're going to double click on the audio composition, either from your layers panel or your project panel. We'll do it from the project panel. And in here you can see that this is keyed for an entire hour, so you don't have to mess around with the lengths of these compositions. But the actual audio layer drops off at about four and a half minutes. So we're just going to extend it all the way so it actually reaches the entire length of the song. From there on, you can see that the audio does continue as you would expect it to be, but there are still a few little tweaks we can do to make this really work well. Now, if you look into these other files, you will see that, okay, this is what makes up this composition for the ball. There's something very important that you want to keep in mind, and that's this amplitude layer. These are pretty much in every single one of my audio visualizations and the amplitude is actually how loud the song is and the particles will adapt to the sound. For instance, they will flash up brighter when the sound is louder. The thing is, this amplitude right here is not keyed to our audio layer that we have in with the new song. So what we want to do is we want to actually change the audio amplitude. Um, if you actually navigate here and go through just a little bit, Every time you see this amplitude, you will have to do this in the given composition. So you're going to navigate down to this audio layer, which is the same as the audio layer that we have here. And you are going to right click that and select keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. You can see right up here that it says how much it's completed. Now in the top, you will have a new layer, which is titled audio amplitude. And this contains the new audio for the converted keyframes. Now here's one very important thing to keep in mind you have to be at this first frame. If you do not do that, the keyframes will start at the frame you are currently at. What we're going to be doing now is we will be uh, replacing this amplitude here, which has been connected with expressions, and we do not want to get rid of those expressions and lose all the effects. So what we want to do is we want to select this effects attribute here, and you can either go edit and cut, or you can just hit control X, cut out those effects, and then select this amplitude layer here. You can actually delete this one in the process. And you will select this amplitude layer here and control V or paste the effect. And as you'll see, all the keyframes have now been masked right onto here. And you can see that they extend the full length of the composition. Now, since everything has been set up, we can actually do some little changes to make it a little bit more unique so that not every time someone uses the template, it's exactly the same. So some of the things you might want to do is maybe you want to change the font here, which is pretty straightforward. You just go into the actual composition, double click that, and we will just change the font. So I'm, oh wow, that's deadly. Uh, we will not be doing that right now. I'm just going to leave it at code bold is what this one is called. Also, one thing to keep in mind is for the waveform and some of these templates, I have actually used particular. You can turn it off, which it just adds a few particles extra, which are kind of nice. But I assume not everyone here is going to be able to use Particular. So you can just turn it off. I think it's deactivated by default. If you do not have Particular, it doesn't show up at all. I have made sure to use as many normal particles for those who do not have Particular, so you don't have to worry about that. Now, back to the main composition on the topic of customizing the actual audio visualization a little. What you want to do is there's a color correction layer I've added with each of these project files. And in the main composition, you can always find it there. And in the effects panel, which I have to my left here, you will see that there are some predefined effects here. You can add your own, of course, like glow and whatever. But these are pretty much those that start, people starting out with After Effects are going to want to use. So we can kind of tweak a little, change the colors maybe. Now we have this nice blue in there, which what it does is it just mixes the colors so they kind of rearrange, you could say. I'm not going into detail here. You can read up on that. But one of the things I did in the template is that at a certain point I faded it from this pink, you could say, to the actual rainbow colors that we have here right now. These are the defaults. So what you're going to do is you're going to go right click on your layers panel. And the way we're going to do this is we're going to keyframe it. You're going to create a new adjustment layer. From there, we're going to also drag a hue saturation effect onto it, just onto that. 
Now, if I change it here, you will see it works just as you would expect it to. But what we want is we want to actually just have one single color so it's kind of masked. So what you're going to do is you're going to select Colorize. And right now you see everything has this monotone, uh, kind of ugly brown. So we're going to turn up the saturation a bit. So now we have a really nice deep red. We will actually be turning up the saturation even a bit more than that. And now we can just shuffle through the hue a little. With that done, you will see that, oh damn, my rainbow color is gone. Well, that sucks. But the way to do this is, say for instance, we're going to assume that you want the rainbow color to set in after 30 seconds. So zooming in on these 30 seconds right here, we're going to select the adjustment layer. And the way we can actually reduce this effect completely is by removing the opacity. So once the opacity is zero, we automatically have the adjustment layers deactivated. So all the effects on it are deactivated as well, which means that the rainbow colors will come through. We will be keyframing this, so say about here, we will be keyframing the opacity, and at about 30, we want it to be zero. So turning that down to zero, now we have these two keyframes here. And if you just, with page up and page down, go slightly through it, you will see that the color goes from a green to the original color that it was intended to be. And that's how I got this subtle effect. So if you wanted the pink again, you might want to just shuffle through a little. There's our pink. Well, that's almost a purple. So maybe say like that, and then turn it up. So that way you have this really nice and unique. You can even leave it at that. Or you can add something like in the beginning, and let's say you want some glow. So just put a glow on here. And then also the glow fades away, leaving it out to this nice and colorful pattern. Once you have finished that, you can extend the timeline again. Just make sure you have all your settings in where you want them. And from here, you can render it out. So go to File, Export, and Add to Render Queue. Now, I'm assuming that you want to export these to YouTube. So what you're going to do is you're going to select H.264. Now, keep in mind, Creative Cloud, this file format is not supported. If you go into Edit, Preferences, and then I think it's an Import, there is a setting for enabling the legacy formats, so you want to be hitting that. Since I'm using CS6, I cannot reproduce that, but someone else had this issue. So once you have H.264 activated, you're going to be just selecting the destination for where you want to export it. So I'll be just dragging it right here. Let's call it something like uh, Visual. So then select Speichern because German. And then you're going to want to click on the file output module down here to change a few settings. And you'll see right under the format options that we are exporting with we are exporting with a bitrate of three megabits. Now, if you're exporting to a potato, that will be alright, but we are not. We're exporting to YouTube and you might want to do some editing. So you're gonna go and click format settings or format options and just leave the VBR one pass like that and set up the target bitrate to 20 megabits per second. That will ensure that the quality is very good when you're editing, but for YouTube, I suggest if you want to directly export this to YouTube without any further editing, then just turn it down to 10 because that will just suffice because YouTube will turn it down anyway. So hit OK. Check all this again. Check that your audio output is all right. This is a horrible output, so we will be turning it to 320 kilobits per second. Uh, leave all the other settings as they are. And hit OK, and then you can render it out. Now for the other template, Digital Dominance, we will be doing the exact same process just to illustrate that it can be done in exactly the same fashion as with every other template. So as always, you have an audio placeholder. Replace the footage with the file you want. I will be selecting the exact same file as I used before. Then you'll immediately see that everything has kicked in as it should. Everything's looking good. Particles are working fine. But once again, take a look at each one of these underlined settings. So the first thing we're going to do is check for the amplitude to fix that. That is actually not in this file. So let's go to the next one. We'll just say sample text because MLG no scopes. And we will call it uh, Yo because that's the guy who made the music. His name is Yo. So sample text by Yo is this really good song, but it needs an audio amplitude setup. So once again, just check that everything's working, Hit, turn off all your frames, 
then run a RAM preview. Everything's working good. Turn the back on. Then let's go check the timestamp. Actually, in this one, you don't have to do anything with the timestamp. It's just if you want to remove this text or something, you can do all of that, but that's on your own initiative. But what's kind of cool about this one, uh, I want to re remind you that you can actually take all of these different compositions and drag them into other templates if you like some of the things I added to each of them. So what's unique about this one is that it actually has a loading bar that shows the progression of the song. To fix this, so it's actually keyed, the song goes five minutes, so if you look through here, it actually goes totally overboard after a while and it goes past the limit. What you're going to do is, I have this duration layer here which is also assigned with expressions, and in here we will just keyframe it, this slider indicates how many seconds the actual song will take. So since we know it's 5 minutes, so 5 times 60 is 300, and then we will add about 40 because it's 40 seconds. To make sure that this is working as intended, we can go to the 540 marker. So at 540 it should be right at the end. And as you can see, at 540 the loading bar is right at the end, and this is how we want it. Now, in the particles for this one, you see it has an underline, so I suggest checking that out. Also in the project panel, you can see that these all have an underline. Once again, you want to check that your audio amplitude is set up. To fix that, just select your audio layer. Make sure that the sound is on. In the main composition, make sure the sound is off and only the audio layer is on. So what you're going to do is, going to right click, audio layer. And if this is not renamed, then name it uh, amplitude because that will fix some errors. And then you're going to right click on the audio layer, keyframe assistant, convert audio to keyframes. So wait for it to do its thing. With that done, you'll be at the frame zero again. So we can just look through it, open it up, the, uh, open up the new audio amplitude, then check the effects panel and the property and you'll see that it has all been keyframed. Then open up the older audio amplitude that is actually bound with expressions and cut out from your new audio amplitude the effects part with controls X and paste it into the older audio amplitude with control V. Now, I just made the mistake once again that I'm not at the zero marker, so go to the zero marker and just paste it again and it will work. Uh, from there you can actually delete the older audio amplitude because we won't be needing that anymore and that pretty much is how you set up this template. You can see exactly that everything here is working as you want it to. The loading bar on the bottom progresses as it should and all the particles and everything else is keyframed to the music. Like I said you might want to customize this a little. Once again there is in the main composition a color correction layer which you will be wanting to have a look at. This one is a little simpler than the one in the Rays of Light example template. If we turn this slider here, you will see that we now have this really nice green, and just that just makes it a little bit more unique. If you like, you can even colorize it, but I don't know how far you want to go with that, so now we have like this deep red. There are a ton of things you can do with this, but it's all up to you. I just suggest that you make a few changes so it's not all the same all the time. So just keep that in mind when working with the templates. That pretty much concludes uh, how to work with these templates. I hope you were able to follow so far and I'll see you on the internet.